everybody, this is Alchemist 2 and I'm back again with another movie review. I just recently got a chance to see The Hitman's Bodyguard and it was worth every beautiful gory second. Ryan Reynolds was absolutely perfect in his role as the button-down kind of prim and proper rule-following Boy Scout who started off well with his business as a bodyguard and then something happened to lower his status from AAA and of course there, there's a running gag with that. But Samuel L. Samuel L. Jackson is also the exact opposite of that particular character. That's why it works so well, the dynamic, the friction between the two, and then it becomes a bromance. And it is nothing short of just absolutely phenomenal. And the chase scenes in this movie alone are well worth the film in and of itself. It's, it's a predictable plot, however... It's just so incredibly well done. It's very, um, it's very entertaining. Salma Hayek is absolutely flipping gorgeous. And she plays a very foul-mouthed uh, woman who's in jail for good reason. And I won't go into why that is, but she is so funny. Her lines are probably some of the funniest things I've ever heard other than what uh, Darius Kincaid says as Samuel Jackson. Uh, Gary Oldman plays the role of a um, despot. He is a degenerate dictator. And I'm not going to go into his backstory because he's very interesting as well. But you just love to hate him. You think, oh, I hope you get what's coming to you. And it's so satisfying to see what happens. I'm not going to say what. Ugh, sorry, we're having a football game. I don't like those booms. But it's, um, it was the movie I should have watched other, uh, other than Logan Lucky. I did enjoy Logan Lucky, but this more than made up for Logan Lucky. It was well worth my time, well worth my money. Every second of the film was absolutely engaging. It held my attention even though I knew where it was going. The mechanization of plot, it's all been done before, but the characters are very likable and relatable, and I could really uh, latch on to Ryan's part as Michael because he really meant well, but he was so inept at his relationship with Amelia that he just he needed that little extra boost from outside. And um, it comes in, the, in a very unexpected way. And I thought, huh. And, of course, it's a philosophical film as well about love. And I thought, oh, Of course, you know, I'm kind of schmaltzy in that way. God forgive me. But I love that. I just, I, I love love itself. And I know I don't look like the type that would, but I do. And this is what I really, really like. I love action-adventure films. And, and this had, it was less about relationship aspects but still it was a lot of good uh, object lessons that I learned <laughs> I thought oh this this could be good pointers for me too because like Michael I I tend to explain everything and it drives other people away and I tend to come off as a little bit um maybe bookish and I, I think that's also kind of off-putting to people but I don't, I don't mean to be. <laughs> I'm actually very fun-loving. I'm, I'm an adventurous type, but only if I know what I'm getting into. It's, it's called calculated risk. I know that makes no sense. But if I realize, oh, I'm, I'm with a professional. Hey, good. I'll be fine. Let's go. But if I think, uh, we're going into this headlong. Actually, I had a little bit of problem with impulse, so it's kind of a contradiction. Um, I'm working on that, but... <clears throat> Um, <clears throat> I give Hitman's Bodyguard two thumbs way up, no kvetching, no complaining, no ragging, nothing about this film was in any way, um, to the point where I would think, oh, this movie's terrible. No, this, this movie was absolutely sensational. I laughed so hard. I haven't laughed that hard in a movie since, um... Any of Adam Sandler's films, I should say. Uh, yeah, it's been a long time since I really had a really good laugh. And that would be Mel, Mel Brooks is probably the one that can really get me. Because he's so good. He's my idol. 
but this one, if you like action adventure, if you want a good bromance, if you want some good romance in the film, and object lessons, and it's just, it's so touching, you think, oh, it, it warms your heart, and then of course there's redemption, and sacrifice, and repentance, and vengeance, <coughs> vendetta be met, and all these themes just line up very nicely. And not only that, but it's a globetrotter. And I adore globetrotters just like I do with 007. That's why 007 is so good. Just because it doesn't just take place in England like this one does. It's sort of, it's very reminiscent of 007. <coughs> but it has other parts that take place in the Netherlands. I thought, oh, they have a red light district. Oh, who would have thought? But... I was thinking Holland was the only one, maybe, yeah. In Europe, I'm thinking red light districts exist everywhere because according to what my SFC friend said, he, I think he ran into one in Germany, if I'm not mistaken. So in Europe, I'm thinking red light districts are very common. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Might be in certain countries more, more so than others. I don't know how likely it is. Holland, most definitely, because... Amsterdam. Hello! That is the red light capital of the world, but um, <laughs> I should know. I had a friend from there. Anna, if you're listening, hey, I have it here for you. Talk to me, please. Um, but other than that, it's, it's an absolutely sensational movie. It's very, very gory, but it's, you know, it's well worth the gore. It's not just gore for gore's sake. It's sort of like with Dexter. You know that the bad guys are getting what's coming to them, so... It's, uh, as far as R-rated movies are concerned, it definitely earns that title with all the profanity. <laughs> um, of course, Samuel L. Jackson, sure, you know. I can't stand all these M MF and snakes on this MF and plane! You know, it's, it's kind of the same thing. It's so funny, though. So epic. I mean, I just love him. He's so great. I mean, he's just awesome. He's, he's the dude. I mean, he, he is badass, so... I wouldn't want to make him angry. I would I would get off his way like, yeah, yeah, go ahead, do your thing. Go on. But, of course, uh, Ryan was also the clean-cut hero, the nice little contrast to Mr. Oh, I'm going to jump in headlong willy-nilly and, and do whatever the heck I want because guess what? I can. I'm the cockroach. I'm indestructible. But it's just, oh, it's so, so good. And it was so, so so entertaining and I like the fact that Sam actually sings a song in the car <laughs> and if you stick around for the credits he he actually does sing the song that they made an actual song I thought oh thank god <laughs> when can I do a cover of it but I you know I wouldn't do all the profanity but it is a hilarious song it's absolutely hysterical I laughed until my sides hurt and I really needed that break but um it's an absolutely tremendous film. If you haven't seen it, go see it. It's worth it. Worth every penny. I got my money's worth. Um, as far as other things are concerned, I have been writing quite a bit. Uh, I heard a song by 24 Hours featuring Dollar Sign with Khalifa. I really like it. It's called What You Like. I love that song. That song is so good. It's lit. Uh, I'm going to do a parody of it. Normally, I don't do... Well, I, we listen to 98.3. Um... 98 at work and that's you know the hip-hop and rap stage I like hip-hop and rap don't don't get me wrong uh, but they play the same things over and over, and over, and over and ad nauseum I just get tired of it but they play they played this they like oh they played my song so oh I got so excited um, but um, other than that tomorrow I'm gonna be seeing my um, realtor I'm going to get the house on the market. I will be moving. I'm not sure exactly when I'm moving. I'm hoping not until after October 6th because that's when I go to NSP. Um, but uh, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to um, the Hound Hustle, which is another 5K. It'll be my fourth 5K of the year. I'm working on a lot of different things. I'm working on... Everything Super 2, which is a sequel to Everything Super, the original that Bright Star and I wrote. Society of the Blue Moon, like I said, will not be 
published in any circumstance under any circumstances unless I can get the right people to look at it and say, oh, this is a great idea. We should make a film out of it. Thank you for noticing. I have good ideas. Um, but uh, I will be writing some other stories here. I've got a whole stack of stuff. I know I've gone over this before, but I'm actually going to be doing a... Uh, <coughs> Another song, I, I, I've come up with a melody, it's called Health Captive by You, but it'll be in, um, blah, 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 Bollywater Bust, which is my rom-com. Um, I've written Bollywood song, uh, Bollywood songs before. It's more of an American-ish song, so it's not going to have that Bollywood flavor, but it's, uh, another script that I, I really want to see done. What I, one I really, 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 really want to see is uh, The Peacock's Lesson, just because I, I think it, it's near and dear to my heart. If you know me, you know I love pe peacocks, are one of my favorite birds. Well, if I could list all my favorite birds, uh, this is what, this is, would, this, I can't speak English well, this would be how it would be ranked. Okay, my totem is an eagle. You're aware of that. It's my first. Um, underneath that would be just the, the whole category of owls in general. Then the mighty kingfisher, a lone warrior. Um, <laughs> um, underneath that would probably, would probably most likely be um, just your songbirds and whatnot. But I'm thinking that um, just other creatures in general would fit in that category of uh, birds that I like. Um, I lost my train of thought. I can't believe I lost my freaking train of thought in the midst of having an actual thought. But, um, anyway. Uh, but I'm writing quite a bit. And I will be, uh, like I said, doing a, a drawing for someone. It's, it's a drawing for my friend over in Egypt. I don't know if he's from Cairo or Alexandria. I can't recall. But, um... I've gotten through quite a few books, as you all know. I'm now reading The Song of Susanna. Uh, I want to finish the Dark Tower series. I'm going to finish that. Uh, do more <clears throat> parodies and songs. So I'm always busy doing that. I'm going to be writing in my journal about uh, just accepting the fact that I'm an orphan. Well, earthly. Yes, that's true. Physically, yes, I am an orphan, but spiritually, no, I am not. But, uh, I'm going to get really personal here, and I don't know if you magicians know this, but I trust you. I actually had kind of a meltdown in August, and the reason being is I still miss my dad, and there's still quite a big hole in my heart from that, and I miss him immensely, and I miss mom immensely, I know they're around. I, <laughs> Jack and Diane played on the radio not too long ago. Today, a thousand miles played on the radio. And I thought, oh, you got to be kidding me. Really, Mom? <laughs> and it made me laugh and smile. I thought, okay, good. This is, this is a good sign because I'm going to be moving uh, to a smaller town. And I'll let my cousin know where I'm, where I'm going, what I'm doing. But it's... Uh, it's a little bit unnerving, but I'm I'm happy to do it. I'm happy to make the move. I think it'll be healthier for me. I think I'll get into something I actually enjoy. Um, once I get everything, once I get my head on straight, which is coming sooner rather than later, uh, I'm going to get involved with my dreams. I've always wanted to chase these dreams. Oh, hmm, I should mention this. Camera shots! <laughs> I almost forgot to mention camera shots in this film. Oh my dear lord, it's art. It's so beautiful. I thought, oh, this director, I need to contact this director. It was a director I didn't know, but every pan, every above head, every, he did a voyeur at the end in the shape of a heart. Oh, ah, magnifique. I just absolutely loved it. Oh my gosh, but really exquisite filmmaking. And it was very... Uh, commented thinking just point of view from the character like when uh, Darius was in the car looking at the streets of London and saying you know those 
uh, tiny, what did he say? Um, narrow streets, tiny town, um, whiteboard windows, etc. You know, very quaint. And <laughs> I thought, yeah, well, it's England. But <laughs> I've never been, but I've, I've seen so many films about England. I think well, England is very quaint and very, very charming. And, and there's a lot of allure to it. And it draws me in. Like when I saw the Netherlands, I thought, I've got to go to the Netherlands. I've got a friend there. They, they can take their dogs into the open market. What the heck? That's awesome. I want to go. Let me take me, please. But anyway, um, I'm learning quite a bit. And I'm writing a lot. And just keeping myself really busy. And... Watching community, the community is my latest thing right now. It's something that I've uh, decided to get back into, and boy, am I glad I did! It's the one of the funniest things I've ever uh, watched. <laughs> I watched a lot of the classics growing up. Like I really liked, yeah, I'm gonna admit to liking it, but I mean, going back to it, it actually was a really good show. Family Matters, Full House, those were my jam back in the day. I liked Boy Meets World. And, uh, there was, um, what, Wonder Years, which I fell in love with Fred Savage, and of course, um, Danica McKellar, she was in it, and I realized that Danica McKellar was actually, you know, connection, she was in TBBT, I thought, I know her, I thought, oh, she's back, she's absolutely stunning. I'm not gay. Anyway, <laughs> getting that out of the way, um, I enjoyed that show. Uh, there were just, back in the 90s, there were so many really good television shows. There really aren't now. I got my favorites that I'm going to catch up with. I got a lot to, to do, a lot to catch up with, but I will eventually. So it's going to take me time. Uh, be patient with me. I will review them. Um... I really want to see Jab Harry Met Sajal because it's kind of like, it reminds me of DDLJ a lot. And I'm thinking, oh, this is so much like Shah Rukh's first film. I don't know if people notice the similarities between the two, but they are there in, in mass. And of course, it reminds me of Zindagi Ne Di Bolara, if I'm getting the, the name, if I'm botching up the name. Forgive me, Hindi is not my first language. But it really brings that to mind. Uh, shades of... Well, it's basically a Hindi remake of When Harry Met Sally. But it's... Um, I'm really looking forward to it. And it should be really good. That's all I got to say for now. So until next time, live long prosper. Ciao, Tutti.